They say the only constant in life is change. For me and others, the biggest and most unexpected life change came in the form of a chronic illness. My name is David Chaikin, and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis about 20 years ago. I have a fairly uncommon course called Primary Progressive MS. And like it or not, change is definitely one thing you can count on with Primary Progressive MS. If you or someone you care about has Primary Progressive MS, how do you get a handle on this disease? Of course, you'll want the best possible medical care. You'll need to engage the right team of professionals who know and understand multiple sclerosis. But you'll also want to hear from the other experts, people who are living with primary progressive MS. And that's what we'll do in this program. You'll meet four people who have primary progressive MS. They have very different backgrounds and stories, and each brings a unique perspective to living with the disease. Our first stop is Rochester, Minnesota, home of the Mayo Clinic and the Rochester Athletic Club, where almost any day of the week you'll find Tom Holtecker. The Athletic Club has become Tom's second home. Tom first noticed problems with his vision in 1968, and things slowly began to get worse. I graduated from the Mayo Physical Therapy Program in 1972, and about a year later started to develop uh, numbness and tingling in my fingers and my, hand, my feet, too. And I finally uh, saw a neurologist, a new neurologist, and he said, I have no doubt that you have MS. Although Tom has retired as a physical therapist, he continues working part-time as a personal trainer. It keeps him active physically and mentally. Really thinking of the quality of the exercise, not just the quantity. Very, very important to maintain what I have so whatever I'm losing is a result of the MS and not because I'm sitting in my lazy boy eating bonbons and watching TV all day. Our next stop takes us to the beautiful hills of eastern Tennessee, where Kathy Kempf lives with her husband, Bob. Okay. In a way, it was her MS that brought them here. They had been living in Atlanta, where Kathy was on the fast track in the corporate world. It was the early 1990s, and everyone in Atlanta was getting caught up in the Olympic spirit, including Kathy and Bob. So everybody in Atlanta was uh, out trying to get fit, and we were trying to do the same thing and noticed that I couldn't really run because every time I would try to step on a certain foot, I would start to fall. After four years of increasing symptoms, Kathy finally received the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. You know, I needed to step back and uh, emotionally disconnect from years of a career and begin to focus on myself and my health issues and how I was gonna make my life more rich and fulfilling. Kathy and Bob moved to Tennessee where they adapted to a new lifestyle. They've become very involved in their church. Kathy is an active volunteer in the community and she enjoys the support of a group of loyal friends. We now travel from the hills of Tennessee to the city, the Big Apple. Here we meet Jason De Silva, a talented young man who, like millions of others, came to New York chasing a dream. So I moved to New York in 2001, and I was living here. I was working as a filmmaker. I was 23 years old, and I was a, had a film that was running for Academy Award qualification. It was about that time where I remember feeling like I was having trouble walking in the way that it just settles small things. Finally, the diagnosis came. You have multiple sclerosis. I'm like, okay. So my, my initial reaction, in my head, I was like, that's cool. I was like, whatever, I'll figure that out. 
After producing several successful films, Jason is now turning the camera on himself. He produces a series of video blogs and is working on a PBS special. The film documents his journey with MS. I would roll with the punches, so having MS is just another punch that I have to learn to roll with, right? Yeah. Like, MS, I would say MS is easier to have than it is being an independent filmmaker in New York City, right? <laughs> so. Finally, we travel back to the Midwest to Madison, Wisconsin. It's the state capital and home of Shelley Peterman Schwartz. She was in her early 30s, married with two young children when she experienced her first symptoms. Well, I was a teacher of the deaf and I was having trouble signing and fingerspelling. And I couldn't understand what was happening. Before long, she had an appointment with a neurologist. And within 45 minutes, the neurologist said, I think you either have MS or brain tumor. It turned out to be primary progressive MS. Her progression advanced so rapidly that she had to retire from teaching at the age of 35. But then she began writing about her experiences and sharing her work with others. One thing led to another and she started a new business called Meeting Life's Challenges. It is for people who live with chronic illness and disability we help people with the strategies and the solutions and tips and products that'll make their life easier. This is Shelley Peterman Schwartz and welcome to Making Life Easier. Shelley hosts her own internet radio program. My guest today is Jeffrey Gingold. She's written seven books and makes regular appearances on a local television news show. Shelley Peterman Schwartz is with us today at noon. Hi Shelley. Hello. And you Needless to say, her new career has taken off. You know, it, it's growing, and so now it really feels good because it's like I'm a teacher again, but my audience is different. In this program, you'll learn a lot more about Tom, Kathy, Jason, and Shelley. You'll also hear from a number of leading healthcare professionals who are experts in the field of primary progressive MS. You'll learn what makes primary progressive MS different from other courses of MS. You'll also see what you can do to maintain your health and quality of life. You'll find out what various members of the healthcare team do to help people manage progressive MS. And finally, you'll learn about ways you can plan for the changes that the future may bring while living with primary progressive MS. Hopefully, this program will give you the perspectives you need to move forward.